Um, I'm graduate director of repositories, there's a lot of names on there. My name is Nick Shepard from Leeds Metropolitan University, um, really talking about open metrics for open repositories. Um, the metrics, as we're learning a lot this week, are vital to monitor the effectiveness of open access um, activities uh, to support business needs for various stakeholders. Um, in many ways, open access is still, in like its infancy, still in the days in many ways. Um, as I say, those are the need for metrics to understand better how repositories are being used to inform policy decisions and technical infrastructure, both at a local level and uh, nationally. Um, it's not just about research, I think it's open data, open educational resources, and open landscape in general. Uh, this year, although you know, open access is growing up, this year sees the 10th uh, birthday of the BOAI, um, with some explicit recommendations about the alternative metrics that should be used in evaluation and assessment. And the repository should be heavily involved in exploiting those uh, opportunities, any opportunities to, um, for, for usage of bibliographic data and make them openly available. Um, this is, I think, is especially important on the back of the Finch report, which those in the UK will be, be aware has tended to focus on gold over green um, open access to the tune of an estimated 50 to 60 million pounds. The opening, I suppose, there, or well, the suggestion would be the green's failed, you know, what does failure look like, that's like that, I think. Um, what does success look like, and you know, have we got the evidence for that? So, to repository management, saying we'll open it up. Ideally, we want the article level dynamic um, data. Um, the software issues around that we come on to, uh, but you know, wrangle your software, buy a bank in at the dev to do it for you. There is a need for us to get applications, technical challenges for that, again, through the software issues and fragmentation um, of the software and what it can do. From my perspective as an institutional repository manager, I'm interested in uh, a number of factors, total number of records, full text, and data only. I prefer to have just full text, I don't, unfortunately, not many people do. How do we assess that as a raw figure proportion? There's no clear way of doing that. And you know, how sort of records being accessed? Is it being browsed? Is it searched? Is it increasingly social media referrals important? I've got software issues to put in mind. They will go with those. I tend to rely on Google Analytics, which is great. You can get lots of data from it. You can get a good overviews and you can drill down into the data. It's difficult for me to actually make dynamic article level metrics available, though. We can get sort of uh, demographic data and uh, a variety of visualizations and increasingly visualizations, I think, through the forum. Equally, I'm unashamed, unashamedly uh, for IR stats, which I think is the best example um, for the software I've seen out there. It's not really been hacked. You still need a dev to do it for you, but there's all sorts of nice uh, visualizations for you. Uh, and it has an open interface, which is crucial again, I think, because, uh, you know, again, in terms of the spur of and getting that stuff. This is an example from uh, Edinburgh, I think. Uh, and as I say, uh, great as an advocacy tool, you can. I'm, I don't have any prints, but I'm, just, I'm not quite sure what sort of different data you're able to get out of it. But uh, you know, also it's dynamic at the article level, visual, open, you know, all things that I think we should be aspiring to in our repositories. DSpace, for my limited knowledge, is a little less well served. Um, here at Edinburgh, there was a Google Analytics plugin developed which approximates the functionality of IR stats, does give you the item collection repository data. Um, not quite as slick, I don't think, as IR stats it is, you know better than some of the other these spaces out of there. There was a link on that last slide to virtually get this from GitHub. Um, when Brian originally started looking at this, he uh, started to, I mean, even just getting full text numbers was very difficult. From that thing, for instance, it was configured to do the, the full text uh, search. You could do that, but when he tried to do it across a wider range of repositories, he found they weren't configured um, in that manner. I could do it from my repository. So a more scalable approach was thought to be a, uh, the National Navigation Service, which was RepUK, um, which, uh, Another service I'll tell a bit about later is Core, where both of which we found, I mean, again, in the very basic sort of look at them, I found a few discrepancies. Um, I mean, I keep hanging on about full text repositories, I think we should be looking towards those, especially with Chris um, repositories coming through, you know, and that's issues for this topic as well. Rep UK, it's, it's again, lots of data visualization you can get out of, of Rep UK. Um, there's uh, uh, Issues with some of the accuracy, I think, perhaps depends on the repository setups uh, to some extent. I mean, this is a, a particular example from Edinburgh, again, showing stats over time. Crucially, as well, it's got the MIME types on there, um, which is, you know, again, gives an approximation of just the board and we know what, what data is out there, how many full texts are out in, in the wild, as it were. Enables us to start seeing trends for local repositories <coughs> and nationally. Um, this, uh, according to uh, Quick Look, you know, that's going for 400,000 PDFs. Obviously, this needs to be with digital salt and interpretive, but so, you know, the data is going to come there. Um, the figure for, I mean, I was just interested in just to put accurate, and uh, did a bit of a joke, James, too, and I'm pretty really see that it was almost accurate, close enough anyway, with the 
uh, per, per, per area, but it seems to be quite diff not quite accurate for City University in London, so I'm not sure you know, it's pretty issues with software and that type of thing, but you can drill down into different repositories and get pretty neat visualizations for all sorts of trends within local repositories and across the sector. It's still relevant, so there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of potential activity in the UK. Um, I mean, in terms of the research requirements, I mean, the, the, the research is always the data, and, you know, and I think increasingly it may have a, an effect on deposit choice. I mean, Plus and Alpha are both displaying article level metrics. So we actually need to start thinking about number aggregations. I mean, I know the Curtis Project was doing that, and there's issues with publishers and you know, all these kind of things. Um, third party services uh, like Core, I think, need to be put in blow. I know this stuff in a workshop this morning with Brett, Plus UK, Plus UK. And, uh, you know, there, there, there's various researchers under that. I mean, something like Core, for example, does cache copies of the full text. So if it's served to a user from that aggregation, it will not going for a uh, repository uh, statistic and there's, there's various issues around that again, especially as the landscape becomes more um, complex, um, which I think it is doing. I mean Core could, um, it, it's a great repository analytics tool and enables repositories uh, like us to manage to myself to see, you know, is your data being searched and harvested and if not, why not? So yes, it's complicated and stats as we don't tell the whole picture. Um, I think there's a discussion we had though about um, digital for the greatest value for our strategic process, which may not necessarily tell you with senior management. Um, managers need to be proactive because we do promote what to our culture um, and Thank you.